Here we are with part two of this texturing workflow from Clow to Substance. And um, previously we set up this base material here and I wanna go over now how to set up the material IDs for this. Um, there's a couple of ways we could do this. And one I mentioned previously in the video before um, was to right click on this folder that contains our material and click add black mask. And I could either now paint a mask in this um, 2D workspace, or I could paint a mask in the 3D workspace. So, for example, if I wanted to have this entire 2D UV tile mapped off, um, masked off, I could do that. But if you see as I paint, it's actually painting on other layers, on other areas of this model, and that's because of how this brush is working. So it's set now to alignment tangent wrap. So I'm going to clear this mask and start and I'm going to set this alignment of this brush for this mask to UV and now if I paint on this UV I'm just going to be painting on this UV tile I'm not going to be painting it anywhere else so I could mask off this entire tile by painting across it like this I could do the one next to it and then we will create a mask that contains just this material so now I've kind of manually painted this in and I have a mask that um, applies to just the jacket. So this folder now contains just the jacket fabric. Um, I could then go along and do that for the rest of the, the materials, but that's going to take time. And part of what we've done in, um, Claw and the exports we created allows us to do this in a much more efficient way. So I'm just going to remove this mask. Um, and I'm going to right click on here and I'm going to click add mask with color selection. So that will add a, a mask in and it, right now we'll see everything is white because we have no color selection. And if I come to my shelf and I search for ID, for the ID maps that we created before. So this is what I exported from um, Clo in the last, um, in the last video. Um, the, the IDs are basically a color to represent each material. So if I drag this ID mask into this slot up here, into the color selection slot on the right side from where we've imported it in the shelf, and I select and I choose pick color, um, all the different fabrics now have a color selection that I could work with. So for this one, I want the jacket and I'm gonna select orange for the jacket. So now my all the pieces on this layout that were orange are now selected by this color selection tool so this is a lot quicker and a lot more efficient way to kind of select materials and now that we've done this we can repeat this process for each of the different um fabric layers that we want to create so i'm going to close this folder down and i'm going to rename it um leather jacket and then i'm going to right click and i'm going to duplicate this and i'll rename this Thanks. And I'll go to the color select option here and I'll press minus to delete the orange color select and I'll go to pick color and I'll choose the yellow color select. And now the yellow um, has given us this um, base color from the from the fold here. So the base material is also copied into each of these files and I can repeat this process. So I'll duplicate this folder. I'll call this lining. And I'm going to go to color selection. I'm going to delete the yellow one. I'm going to pick a color. I'm going to select the red lining. And then I'm going to repeat again, duplicate this layer, call this zipper, delete the red selection and color select and pick the pink selection. Let's zoom in, pink selection. Then Duplicate again, call this metal, go to the color select. I'm going to pick these green pieces, remove the pink one and see if we could pick these gray pieces as well. Um, yeah. So if we now do this one last time for the um, t-shirt, I'll call this. I'm going to delete these metal color selects here. 
actually for the metal we didn't need the pink one i don't think yeah i delete that so it's just the green and the gray values to create the metal here in the t-shirt we want to pick this green color and then we have the neck trim as well which will be a separate material so the neck trim the color select for this will be the blue and now we should have all of our fabrics applied with a color selection and we can see all of these materials in this um in the 3d view now but now everything is editable by itself so i can turn on the visibility of these layers as i wish and these are all now layers that are visible that are edit editable on their own so the first thing i'm going to do is look at the leather jacket and what I'm going to do is import some resources to work with in this project for this leather material. And the first thing I'm going to do is bring in some normal maps for a wrinkle. And I've got four leather wrinkles that I can work with here that I'm going to drag into the shelf on the side. Um, in Substance Painter, um, I'm going to select all of these um, layers, go to Texture on the, the Undefined section to import these as textures. And in the import resource section, I'm going to click library so I can use these in multiple projects. And I'm going to click import. And then I'm going to do the same again for some leather surface detail. So this is a, a more fine detail of leather that I'm going to drag into the shelf. Again, I'll select everything, select texture, bring this into the library and click port. And now I can start to build up some normal map um, details on top of this um, jacket, this leather jacket. So if I look at this leather jacket folder, the one we created at the bottom, um, I could drag this to the top for easier visibility, I guess. Um, I have this base material. So if I open the leather jacket folder that we have created, look at the base material. We already have a base color, some height information for the stitches and a normal map for the puckering. Um, I'm going to delete this um, check, de check pattern from the leather so that we are just working with a base color. So for now, I'll set it to something like a kind of dark red. Um, I can work now on top of this um, to create more layers and more layers of detail as we stack up this um, this material here so we'll work just within the leather, leather jacket folder and i'm going to add another fill so if i click this paint bucket icon here and add another fill um i want this to just affect the normal channel so i'm going to click and turn off all these other channels here except normal um we just leave the normal one open and now we have a a, a normal uniform color that we can work with and i'm going to take into here first one of these leather surface details so I'll drag the first one in that I've imported and I'll see that the scaling initially is quite big um, but we are seeing the, the leather detail as we start off with. So if I scroll up, I have this tiling option under UV transformations and I can increase this number to have a more, a finer grain on this leather. So I am going to increase this to maybe about six to see how this looks uh, on the the jacket which is kind of okay um right now i have um a new layer and it's just called fill layer and i'm going to rename this to um leather detail one because we're going to add layers of leather detail to this so i'll call this leather detail one and i can just now now that i've set up this tiling i have this slot here i could just drag in these other normal maps and see how this leather grain can look a bit different so i'm using alt and the left mouse button to rotate this and the um, middle mouse button to zoom in and I'm just going to drag in these other normal maps into this slot to see how they look um, for now I could take this one this is quite a classic looking leather maybe the second one We can experiment. I'll I'll post a link that you guys can download these from if you don't have your own resources to work with. But it's always good to build up a library of um, normal maps and things to to bring into projects, especially for for basic colors like uh, basic materials like this. 
I'm going to increase the tanning a little bit on this one. And we see we've already created a quite nice leather looking material just by adding this one normal map. Um, I'm using shift and right click to rotate the light to just see this in a bit more detail. And then I'm going to go back here and add another layer of normals to this. So I'm going to right click here and duplicate layer. And I'm going to rename this leather detail to, and I'll call it wrinkles as well. So I know it's the wrinkle layer. And now if I come into this, um, this shelf here and I search for wrinkle, I should have the four wrinkle maps I loaded before, and I'm going to take the second one to start off with and just drop that in this slot. Um, the tiling is still set to seven, well, 7.5 from the previous layer that we created. So I'm just going to bring this down a little bit to make it larger in, d in scale and just see how this affects the surface of the the jacket in general so i can turn this on and off it's quite an intense normal map this one um i'll look at some of the other ones to see also how they're affecting the wrinkling maybe that one's nice to use yeah i'll go for this third one actually um because it's giving me a nice edge look to this leather and I'm just going to zoom out a bit with the scaling on this. And then I'm going to blend this layer in a bit better. So if I take, if I look in the layer palette on the side here, currently I'm looking at the height channel. You might be looking at the base color, but if I turn this on to normal and I'm looking at my leather detail layer here on the normal blending option here on the right side, and I drop this hundred percent slider down here. If I, drop this down I'm going to reduce the intensity of this wrinkles um, from either 0 to 100 and I'm going to bring this down to maybe 40 um, just to have a less intensity on that normal map but still have some kind of additional imperfections and wrinkles on the surface of this leather so if I look at it here and I turn this on and off I can see what effect that's having on my the surface of this jacket so that's setting up very basically the, the surface detail of this leather. Um, what we can look at next is um, the roughness channels and um, how we can make the surface of this feel um, a bit more uh, realistic. So to add this roughness detail in, what we're going to do is add an additional fill layer. So um, we can duplicate this layer call this um, rough detail one because we have multiple rough details and I'm going to turn off this normal channel and turn on the roughness channel. So now this slider will affect the roughness of this leather. So if I slide this all the way to the white side, we have a very rough, uh, no shine whatsoever. And if I slide it all the way to the black side, it will have a completely shiny and reflective material. Um, we want to add some kind of depth to this and not stick to one value because if I look under this drop down menu in the middle here to look at our texture maps, um, if I visualize the roughness map here, um, you see we just have a, a one value of roughness across this, this one mid gray value. Um, and what we can do is with this slot here, add in a 3D purling noise and we will see immediately an issue, but we will see that we can um, add depth to this the black and white value instead of keeping one gray value. And initially we're going to see the UV is projected. And if we look here under the projection, it says UV projection. If we click fill instead of UV projection, it will fill this tile with a noise. And that noise right now is a very large scale noise. And if I look at this in material view, you'll see, and I spin the, rotate the light, you'll see some areas have roughness, some areas very shiny, some areas are very rough. And that's because we have now created this roughness map with black, white, and gray values. Um, I'm going to increase the scale of this noise. I'm going to increase the balance, or decrease the balance maybe. We'll add into the scale quite considerably. Um, 
this limit will reach 64 but if you want to go higher than this you can override this by entering a number manually and then we can increase this quite substantially um there is a distortion factor as well we can look at this is all experimentation that you guys can do as you go through this process you will look at different noise types so we can look at the one next to it maybe this is better 3d noise fractal um we can increase the contrast on this a bit um let's see how this looks as a roughness um so let's look at the material here and we get more of a um a kind of natural looking roughness to this fabric now um this is our first layer of roughness that we could add so um we could build up on this i could duplicate this layer i could call this with the detail two i could change this noise um to one of the other noise options that we've got within substance ridge noise fractal for example um i could change this position value to make it more intense or more rough or less rough let's say um and then i could blend this over the other one so i would want to do that again with these blending options here so if i go to normal and i drop down roughness i have this 100 percent slider here again and i can slide this down to start to blend this over the the roughness map i created underneath it so here i'll blend this down at about 38 and now i've got um two layers of roughness detail and if i look at my normal height and mesh map i've got two layers of normal map detail as well as the stitches being visible so if i look again at the material we've now created some uh, more customized roughness we've created some more um, levels of detail in the surface and in the shine of this and if we want to kind of add more of a top coat to this that gives it a bit more shine let's say um i could add one more roughness layer to this i can duplicate this layer again um i'll rename this layer roughness detail three i'm going to delete this slot by i'll press x to clear this slot and i'll slide this slider up to um towards the black side to give this quite a shiny look on this leather and if I look in the roughness map now, um, we we can make this lighter or darker. And I'm going to push this more towards the dark side. And I'm going to look at, again at this roughness blending and maybe push this back down a little. Um, and see this in material view. And now we've we've created more of a glossy look to this leather. So if I turn this off, it's a bit rougher. And if I turn this on, it's a bit glossier. So I could use this to control the amount of glossy that I get. So if I slide this up further towards 100, I get a very glossy look. And if I slide this down, I get a more matte look. So I'll keep it a bit in the middle, maybe 45. And I'll just give this the sub name, let's say, of gloss, just so I know that this is affecting kind of the shine of this, this fabric. Um, so we've now built the basic leather material um and the next thing we want to look at is generators to um procedurally add um further detail to the edges further detail to the to make this look more worn out and lived in and more natural um so in the next part we will look at generators and adding in even further detail to this texture